Hey guys, it's Edward with Refed here. And today I wanna to talk about bristle worms. Specifically, I wanna talk about bristle worm prevention using peroxide as a dip. Now, before we get too far into this, I wanna address the elephant in the room, which is the fact that a lot of hobbyists really like bristle worms. Uh, they want them in their tanks. They find them to be useful detrivores. They find them to be a natural part of the reef ecosystem. I'm not one of those people. Uh, I don't like bristle worms. They've got a nasty sting for two. Their populations explode easily, especially if you've got a sand bed like this. But they also get really, really large over time. And I don't want to come in at night and go to feed my corals and find some 12-inch horror crawling around. And then lastly, micro brittle stars perform every beneficial function that bristle worms do without any of the downsides. So with that being out of the way, let's get into it. Let's talk about using various concentrations of peroxide and I'm gonna show you how it's done. So this is a 25% solution, 300 milliliters of tank water and 75 milliliters of your standard 3% peroxide that you can get at CVS or Walgreens or, or wherever. This recording was taken about a minute in, and as you can see, there's a really strong reaction, but within about 10 to 15 seconds, uh, the first wave of bristle worms is already crawling out and dying. And the bristle worms were coming out from under the frag plug. They were coming out of the ACAN skeleton. This is actually my ACAN frag that uh, was having bristle worms burrowing into the skeleton. And again, you know, I, I can't guarantee you 100% that it was dead tissue or live tissue. You know, you're just gonna have to go with, you know, whatever your, your personal opinion or hypothesis is. But the ACAN, since going through this peroxide dip, uh, has been doing much, much better. So I was really happy with the results, but again, you'll need to consult Humblefish, which I'll attach to the video. So this was a 500 milliliter tank water solution with 50 milliliters of peroxide. So 10% concentration. And I'm gonna do a quick cut here just you know, to be concise in the video, but they start to react about 50 seconds in. This is just about two minutes in, and there are no more bristle worms remaining in the rock. However, if you note, none of them are actually dead yet. So at 10%, it is a very strong irritant, but it hasn't actually killed the worms yet, although they, they may be dying. So this is 500 mLs of tank water, and 10 mLs of peroxide, which comes out to be a 2% solution. And again, it's slower, but within about 30 to 40 seconds, the worms start crawling out. You can see the first one right here. Uh, you see another one crawling out of the rock right there. So in terms of getting these guys out of the rock or your frags, um, even a 2% solution works really, really well. And 2% solution is gonna be safe for 99% of your corals out there. And just about two minutes in, I'm gonna stir the water and rotate the rock just to see if there's any more bristle worms remaining, which I couldn't find any. So this is a 1% solution, 500 mils of tank water and five mils of peroxide. My gani is partially exposed here because it wasn't quite enough um, tank water to, to cover the gani. It's okay. Um, this is a gani that had been received and closed up on me for a while, been giving me trouble. Um, right here, the first bristle worm comes out. I cut ahead. It took about a minute or so. Uh, so the 1% solution is definitely weaker. Um, and I would say it took over two minutes for the, the remainder of the bristle worms to come out. So um, it, it definitely functions as an irritant, but um, you know, as you can see here, it's, it's not as effective as uh, 2% or you know, especially not as effective as the 10%. 
And lastly, as a bonus test, I wanted to take a look at Coral RX, which is a pretty popular product for coral dipping, and it's known to be gentle, whereas peroxide comes with some risks. So let's see how it fared with bristleworms. So this is the recommended dosage in 1500 milliliters. And I have to fast forward here because there was really no reaction. So I'll flip the rock over. Uh, after about 10 minutes in, uh, the worms are clearly irritated, but they're not falling off. So it wasn't really very effective in getting them out of the little nooks and crannies. And I'm not trying to beat up on Coral RX. I think it's a good product, but they do list that it's useful against bristle worms. And I just didn't find that to be the case. That said, there may be a certain concentration that is more effective and it may be more gentle on a wider range of corals. So don't discount it completely, but uh, in this test, it just didn't stack up that well against the peroxide. Lastly, I wanna point out the guidelines for peroxide dipping from Just Incredible. You can find it here at Humblefish. And this shows you based on one liter of tank water, your concentrations for various types of coral. So your acropore, a lot of your SPS are the most sensitive, um, and that's gonna be around a two to four per set. And then your euphilia, your zoanthids, your uh, palethoa, and your acans can take quite a bit more, uh, 25 to 35% based on this. And anecdotally, Ryan Bachelors talked about recently on his Serious Reefs podcast that they've dipped torches for two minutes in 100% peroxide and had great results. So take that with a grain of salt, but I found this extremely useful. So in conclusion, it's clear that peroxide, even at very low concentrations, is highly effective at removing bristle worms. This is important to me because when I upgrade this system to a 180 gallon system in the future, I'm gonna transfer over some corals from the current system. I wanna be sure that I can prevent bristle worms from ever entering my system. And peroxide's gonna be a really effective tool at accomplishing that. Now keep in mind, you wanna follow the template that I highlighted earlier in the video. That's gonna be Just Incredible's guidelines on dosing. Your SPS and your Acropora may need one to 2%. Your euphilia and some of your LPS can go 25% or even much higher. But I think it's fair to say that anywhere from two to five is gonna be a sweet spot of fast reactivity from the bristle worms and duration spent in the dip. Lastly, the reason I made this video and the reason I created this channel, I wanted to contribute something really meaningful to the hobby. And if you found this useful, please drop me a like give me a comment and i'd really like to know what your thoughts are if you want to argue about why bristle worms are great let me know anyways till next time thanks